Hey guys, you know there's thousands of different types of motorcycles out on the road today, but some are a lot more practical than others and some are just downright funky. Whether they're strapped with way too many motors or have a body design more akin to a children's toy, these motorcycles are totally bizarre. So join me for today's video as we take a look through the top 15 weirdest motorcycles in the world. Number 15. 1955 Moto Guzzi V8 you may not realize it at first glance, but the 1955 Moto Guzzi V8 packed quite a punch for something so small. Moto Guzzi was a prominent Italian racing bike manufacturer in the 1950s, and they made this little guy for the likes of Fergus Anderson, Dickie Dale, and Stanley Woods, all of whom were some of the top racers of the time. They may not be household names today, but at the time they were the cream of the crop, so it's easy to imagine how efficient the Moto Guzzi V8 is. The front of the chassis is almost shaped like a bullet, which makes sense considering it reached a top speed of 178 miles an hour in front of the crowd at the 1957 Belgian Grand Prix. And while it was an immensely powerful bike, it did suffer from some shortcomings in the tire and brake departments, but who needs brakes when all you want to do is go fast? Despite its faults, though, it still managed to race for three seasons, and it's still known as one of the greatest Grand Prix motorcycles of all time, and it also just looks flat out cool. Number 14. Uno Dicycle Alright, this next entry on our list was invented by Ben Gulak of Ontario, Canada when he was just 18 years old. There have been multiple iterations of Gulak's wacky Uno Dicycle, but the first is certainly the most unique, and the weirdest too. Similar to a Segway because of its dicycle configuration, the Uno Dicycle is a self-balancing electric motorcycle. It all started in 2006 when Gulak couldn't help but notice all of the smog during a visit to China. The original design consisted of an angle iron frame with wheelchair motors, batteries, and gyroscopes, but his first test ride ended in a pretty rough crash, a busted kneecap, and even an electrical fire. He quickly teamed up with California-based robotics expert Trevor Blackwell, who was no stranger to this sort of thing, and so they set up the gyro-stabilized vehicle that would become what we see here today. The first Uno was unveiled at the Toronto Spring Motorcycle Show in 2008 and won a top 10 prize on Popular Science's list of 2008 Invention Awards, and Gulak was given a cool one and a quarter million dollars in venture capital for a 20% share in any further development. Gulak would continue to approve upon his weird one-wheeled motorcycle, upgrading it to a two-wheeled version, and then again when creating a three-wheeled option, which is really just a tricycle with the two rear wheels coming so close together that they resemble a single wheel. Number 13. Majestic for better or worse, the First World War changed the course of humanity forever. Despite the death and destruction on the front, nations were faced to outdo one another and push human ingenuity and engineering to their limits. So when the fighting was over and many were able to return to their lives, some saw to the creations of some of the most beautiful European vehicles in the world until well into the latter half of the 20th century. The Majestic was one such vehicle. Like so many other entries we'll see on this list, the Majestic begins with just one person, George Roy. He was a French industrialist and engineer born in 1888, who achieved success in the textile industry. But he also enjoyed this new world of motorcycles in his free time. Roy had a theory that the crude motorcycles of the day could be much improved with a more rigid chassis that dispensed with the usual brazed and welded tube structure shared with bicycles. He would use steel panels riveted together into a monocoque chassis that did double duty as frame and bodywork to do away with the complexities of welding, and this work would lead him to the Majestic. The Majestic features a cosmetic shell that encloses the running gear, beneath which is a pair of underslug square frame rails riveted together with flat bulkheads at the front and rear. Each right angle joint is gusseted for additional strength. It's an arrangement not unlike the body-on-frame automobiles of the era, resulting in a low-slung chassis and a hub center steering arrangement, which gives it its unique car-like look. Number 12. The Road Dog Extreme motorcycle enthusiast Wild Bill Gelbke would work on his road dog from 1962 to 1965, with the end result being one of the wildest rides on the road. William Wild Bill Gelbke was the kind of American a movie should be made about. It all started when he was fed up with his job working on surface-to-air weapons guidance systems, and so he set his mind to creating a bike that could cruise indefinitely at about 100 miles an hour. 
His work was cut out for him, but who better to create such a beast than someone who works on missiles? Needless to say, though, his idea was quite ahead of its time back in the 1960s. His road dog is a ridiculous 17 feet long and weighs 3,300 pounds and seems a little too big to ride safely. So to get the reliability he wanted and rack up over 20,000 miles in its first year on the road, he used a four-cylinder, 152 cubic inch Chevy 2 engine, a power glide transmission linked to a modified Chevy differential, and Corvette disc brakes. The long frame was built using chromoly steel tubing, and due to its weight, there's no possible way it can be supported by a kickstand. Instead, the bike uses four hydraulic jacks. The whole ensemble is an engineering and fabrication masterpiece, and after touring the country, Gelbke planned the Auto 4 variant, based on the road dog using an Austin mini engine and transmission, but only eight were built and sold. So, needless to say, Wild Bill Gelbke became a living legend, and you can catch one of his road dogs on permanent display at the National Motorcycle Museum. The road dog, it may be weird, but it's awesome. Number 11. Jaguar Motorcycle now, Jaguars make for some gorgeous classic car models, all of which are associated with luxury, fame, and royalty. Even the late Queen Elizabeth drove herself in one. And while the manufacturer has yet to actually build a bike, with many of their designs forever in the concept phase, one bike enthusiast took matters into their own hands with the Jaguar motorcycle. And while their vehicle isn't made by the car company, they took their design inspiration directly from the Jaguar bonnet. The brains and brawn behind the operation are the folks at Masao Concept Cycles, and while they may have built something that looks better suited as eye candy and nigh impossible to ride, it offers quite the thrill to any rider who can tame the Buell S3 1200cc V-twin engines. The ride doesn't offer much more than the engines and the uniquely uncomfortable design, but approaching this bike head-on at night can be especially freaky because the headlights placed right in the maw of the Jaguar, so it can literally roar down the street. Number 10. Boomerland 600cc The Czechoslovakian motorcycle manufacturer Boomerland made some pretty interesting models back in the day, but none of them are quite as weird-looking or interesting as their 1936 600cc. Bormerland was notable for having cast alloy wheels, the first production motorcycle to do so, which the founder claimed were far more durable and superior to the conventional spoke type on the local tracks and roads. The tubular steel frame was massive in construction, with enormous and immensely strong leading link forks controlled by coil springs and friction dampers. Each motorcycle was individually hand-built to order, so the specification was liable to alter slightly between machines, and every completed bike was rigorously tested by the man who designed it. Only when the founder was completely satisfied with every aspect of the product could the customer take the vehicle home. Bummerland was quite unique to the industry as the company had no dealer network, so every motorcycle was ordered and delivered directly from the factory. The founder had such faith in his products that he competed regularly and with some success with this model. Number 9. 1968 MV Agusta 861 Magni Arturo Magni was a famous Italian designer who designed the 1968 MV Agusta 861 Magni with his sons. It was a real family affair, but any racing aficionado can recognize the Magni name on the side of the bike and respect both the royalty and the legacy. But Arturo formed a partnership with the Italian manufacturer MV Agusta and went on to absolutely dominate the world of motorcycle racing. But the 861 Magni in particular was built off the already fast Agusta 750S, but they modified it by giving it a newly designed frame, and they overhauled the engine with the new high compression pistons and increased the capacity from 750cc to 861cc, maximizing the bike's performance. And so yeah, it went fast, but perhaps more importantly, it looked good too. This particular model was essentially made for just Magne, and when fellow racers and enthusiasts caught wind of the dramatic changes, they would often send their bikes to him for the race-winning overhaul. Number 8. 1974 Ducati 750SS If you remember your old Economy 101 class, they said that scarcity creates demand, which was the case for the 1974 Ducati 750SS. The 750SS was based on the winning 750cc racer, the Imola 200, and only 401 of them were ever made. 
Also known as the Green Fame, the 750SS was a round case bevel driven Desmo produced generally for street use, but it did have some famous wins on the racetrack by famed racer Paul Smart. And so if you bought this little cafe racer back in the 1970s, I can only hope you didn't sell it, because today it can easily go for over a hundred grand. It even made it to the Art of Motorcycle exhibit in the Guggenheim Museum. Yeah, it's a small bike with a unique design that truly makes it not only one of a kind, but one of the most recognizable motorcycles ever made. And if you do manage to find one, just bite the bullet and buy it. Number 7. 1994 Ducati 916 Ducati is, without a doubt, one of the biggest names in the world of motorcycles. So when they released the 916 model in 1994, the ears of enthusiasts and racers everywhere immediately perked up. While only a few models were ever released in the early days, once it saw success on the racetracks, the demand for the Ducati 916 skyrocketed. Everyone wanted in on the action, and while production only lasted about five years, the Ducati 916 was the winning bike of four out of five Superbike World Championships and one Manufacturer Championship. But part of what makes the 916 so incredible is that it wasn't just for the racers with money. Some of its more popular competitors would cost about 27 grand, but everyday people could score the 916 for about half that price. The short stroke engine churned out 100 horsepower and the bike could reach a top speed of 160 miles an hour. But it's the style of the bike that captured everyone's attention, which according to the designer Massimo Tamburini is meant to resemble the shape of a woman's body. But I'll leave that up to you. The 1994 aesthetic did pave the way for the more flowing lines that you can see just about everywhere today. And while Ducati had made some game changers in the past, their 916 set the bar even higher financially and culturally. Yet this is a tough one to beat. Number 6. Yohammer J1 This claims to be the first production electric motorcycle with a 200-mile range, featuring an aluminum chassis and plastic bodywork, and reaches a top speed of 75 miles an hour. Needless to say, people have a lot to say about this bike, mainly that it's not the cutest thing they've ever seen, but perhaps there is at least some method to this madness. The battery pack is centralized below the rider, while the electric motor and controller are in the rear wheel, supported by a single-side box-section aluminum swing arm, and the twin front swing arms employ hub center steering. Each end connects to a horizontal shock absorber within the chassis, making for a smoother ride. Turning the throttle forward provides braking and regenerative battery power, while the disc brakes are used for low-speed braking. The Yohammer has no central instrument panel, and so data is displayed on an LED window in the rear-view mirrors, which is certainly an interesting and futuristic touch. I'm digging this one. Number 5. Whitlock Tinker Toy Known as the Whitlock Tinker Toy, this wacky 48-cylinder motorcycle holds the record for the functional vehicle with the most number of cylinders. But don't expect to see this thing roaring off the assembly lines anytime soon, because something like this is a custom job. English motorcycle enthusiast Simon Whitlock is the mad genius behind this outrageous motorcycle. It's based on the Kawasaki 250S1, a relatively small bike equipped with a three-cylinder 250cc engine capable of putting out 31 horsepower. But you really can't tell that by looking at this behemoth. This souped-up Kawasaki features six rows of eight original S1 cylinders, stripped off 16 S1 motorcycle engines. All cylinders are connected to a common transmission borrowed from a BMW motorcycle and required more than the regular electric starter motor to start this thing. Whitlock's Frankenstein motorcycle is certainly a head-turner and a big piece of innovation. Because something like this would be so difficult to start, Whitlock built what he calls the Donkey Engine, a small sub 50cc engine which is started first and in turn starts the 48-cylinder engine. But this souped-up Kawasaki was never built with practicality, efficiency, or even basic functionality in mind. Looking at the distance between the handlebars and the front edge of the seat, it's hard to believe that anyone can ride this for more than a few minutes without needing a chiropractor. Number 4. Reliant Robin Even though this one isn't a motorcycle, every few years a car comes out that leaves you with your jaw on the floor and not in a good way. The Reliant Robin is one of those. It was originally released by the Reliant Motor Company in Tamworth, England in 1973, and the world has unfortunately seen a few iterations of the Reliant Robin over those decades. As you can see, the Reliant Robin's claim to fame is its three wheels, making it out to be more of a giant tricycle than it is a car, and believe it or not, but the Reliant Robin was anything but reliable. 
This three-wheel design was an absolute failure, because if you hit a turn too hard, too fast, or too sharp, you were tipping over, with no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The chassis was light and made entirely of fiberglass, but when you couple the lightweight of the automobile with the fact that it could reach a top speed of 85 miles an hour, you got a recipe for absolute disaster. The only way to have a successful drive in the Reliant Robin is to go in a perfectly straight line, but even then the steering wheel ran the risk of popping off while in use. This car isn't just strange, it was also a pretty awful idea. Number 3. Quasar The odd-looking Quasar motorcycle took a cue from the Reliant Robin with its design and really turned the knob up to 11. Essentially a glorified and motorized big wheel, the Quasar requires the rider to sit feet forward or feet first, changing the usual position of the rider from on top and straddling the vehicle to inside and sitting down. Unlike most motorcycles, the Quasar is a cabin motorcycle, so tall riders may have trouble fitting inside of it. In the front of the bike, the laminated glass windscreen had car-style windscreen wipers and a heater, but the use of a semi-enclosed cockpit caused blind spots where the driver had to move their head around to make sure visibility was not obscured by the screen supports in the corners. In all, the design made very little sense to the rider, and if you've never heard of a Quasar, that's okay, because this model never really caught on. The minds behind it couldn't raise the funding required to truly get it on the road. And in the end, only 21 of the original models were made, and as of 2012, only 10 were known to be still on the road. Number 2. TMC Dumont the saying, there's nowhere to go but up, can really truly apply to anybody, but things really go to the next level when that's applied to a retired Formula One driver. Brazil's Tarso Marques has quite a few two-wheeled pet projects sitting in his garage, but his TMC Dumont motorcycle is one of the most unusual, if not the most epic. Certainly a head-turner when it's out on the road, the TMC Dumont motorcycle looks like it came straight from a Bond movie. The motorcycle kisses the hubs goodbye and swaps out the traditional car engine for a 1960s Rolls-Royce aircraft engine to help give off that slick, futuristic vibe. This aircraft engine is situated right where the standard motorcycle engine and fuel tank would go, only it takes up significantly more space and serves almost as the TMC Dumont's full frame. And about those wheels, the motorcycle has 36-inch spokeless wheels for a completely open center design. So coupled with that 300-horsepower engine, it's pretty alarming that you can't see what the brakes and vehicle are working with. And while this technically still is in the concept phase, it is very much real, and he can very much be seen cruising around on it. And since it's so low to the ground, he needs to avoid speed bumps and potholes at all costs, all while avoiding sharp turns that could send him skidding down the street. So yeah, the bike is completely impractical, but that didn't stop him from winning the Best of Show award at the 2018 Daytona Bike Week. Number 1. Bozozoku More than just a motorcycle, Bozozoku is an amazing subculture from Japan that's all about customized motorcycles, but these bikes are unlike anything we've seen yet. Starting out as a scene for the bike gangs of the 1950s, Bozozoku blew up into something much more vibrant and fun in the 1980s and 90s. And while the subculture is awesome, you're guaranteed to see some weird bikes at any meetup. Like this bike known as the CC Lemon, which looks like an old American banana seat bike that grew up too fast. Or this bike that shows off its national pride clad in flags of the land of the rising sun. Or this elongated bike that looks like it roared off the pages of a Japanese manga. The world of Bozozoku is incredibly vast, and those involved come up with some of the most outlandish yet dedicated designs the world will ever see. Nothing's too weird or wacky when it comes to this scene, but you're not going to find any of these bikes at a dealership because all of them are custom mods, known as Kaizosha. Most Kaizosha will combine elements of the American choppers and British cafe racers like raised handlebars and oversized fairings, but they tend to take them to the extreme. And when it comes to paint jobs, the louder the better. Riders will also adorn their rides with flags, stickers, and different decals, all of which tend to depend on their region. Each bike and rider has their own sense of strong identity, and while the days of biker gangs are long gone, the new groups or gangs that form have all formed incredibly strong bonds. Sadly though, the scene isn't quite what it used to be, and in 2015 there were only 6,700 self-proclaimed Bozozoku in Japan. I'll see you next time. Watch our Vehicles playlist for more top 15 videos about amazing vehicles. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best vehicle videos.